spinning is the art of twisting fiber to make string or yarn. By twisting fibers together, many short strands of fiber can be made into a longer, stronger thread. Evidence shows spinning began around 20,000 years ago. Originally, tufts of animal hair or plant fiber were rolled on the thigh with the hand. The next method of spinning yarn was a spindle, a straight stick 8 to 12 inches long on which the yarn is wound after twisting. The spinning wheel replaced the hand spindle around the 11th century, which greatly increased the speed the thread could be spun. Spinning machinery eventually replaced the spinning wheel during the Industrial Revolution and further improved the efficiency of textile spinning. So I met with Susan Hensel, a local fiber artist. Um, I have been a spinner and a dyer for about eight years. So I brought uh, hemp and cotton and wool. Okay. Well, this hemp needs a little work. This is really beautiful, but you can't spin this. No? No. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like animal feed right now. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what you want in the end is just these fine pieces. Mm -hmm. Susan connected me with Nancy to show me the steps I was still missing on the hemp before I could spin it. First, she had me beat the fiber with a wooden stick, knocking off the remaining herd pieces. Then, she had me run the remaining fibers through the sharp claws of a hackle. This helped break up the fibers into individual threads, while also removing any remaining herd pieces. It's also effective at creating puncture wounds. Have you had a tetanus shot recently? Now that I have the hemp properly prepared, it was back to Susan's, where she took me to her basement to show me how to prep my wool for spinning. First, she showed me how to wash the wool and remove the waxy lanolin that covers the sheep's wool. Look how fluffy that is now. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's a little bit of a difference. Yeah, like a whole lot of difference. <laughs> How's it smell now? Mmm, smells nice and clean. Yeah, it smells like wet wool now instead of wet sheep. After washing, the next step is carding the wool. <laughs> so you put in just a little bit of it. Now, the wool is ready to be spun. All righty. I want you to get a little more twist in your leader here, so uh -huh. hold on to it. And so this is the leader here? That's... We'll call it the leader. It's you, The leader is usually the very first thing on your bobbin that you're going to hook your wool to. Here's what you're going to do. The end of your leader, you're going to lay onto your preparation, and then you're going to start drafting forward. So you're going to go pretty slowly. The wool doesn't need a tremendous amount of twist in it to hold together. Mm -hmm. Just pinching a little bit of fiber and pulling forward. I feel it slide in my fingers. It doesn't need to be a death grip. Now slide your fingers up. Slide up, slide up, slide up, slide up, slide up. Now pinch. Pull a little forward. You are spinning, my dear. Oh. Is that lovely or what? Now pinch. Pull a little forward. After showing me how to spin wool, Susan then showed me how to spin cotton which presented an extra challenge because of its very short fibers. When you're spinning cotton, it needs to be spun very tightly. You need lots mm -hmm. and lots of twists per inch. I, get, I let kind of a lump come out. There we go. That's kind of what I want it to look like. Get yourself comfortable with the wool, okay. then move back to the cotton and see how you get that same feeling with mm -hmm. a fiber that's that long. Lastly, she showed me how to spin hemp, which, with its very long fibers, presented the opposite issue of the cotton. So it's actually very easy to spin. That what you have to watch is how many fibers are going in so you're consistent. Mm -hmm. Well, just a few fibers from there first, yeah. Yeah, like that. There you go. Now, you can let some of it come. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks to Susan's expert guidance, I now know how to turn this raw material into something I can weave, which is what I'm going to go do next.